Hello, Year 9. Welcome back to Lord of the Flies. We'll push into Chapter 2 a little more. After a bit of revision. Ignorant means you are unaware, willfully unaware, naive, unknowing, uninformed, or ill-informed. So, can you remember any ways in which Dickens presented the rich as ignorant in their attitude towards the poor? Think about A Christmas Carol and uh, what Scrooge doesn't do for the poor when he's asked to help them, suggesting they should go to the workhouse instead. Or think about the Dickens, uh, so Oliver Twist, um, think about Oliver's fate, orphan boy born in a workhouse, uh, how, what's life like for him outside in the absence of any charity. Spontaneous means sudden, an action performed as a result of a sudden impulse, uh, you're acting of your own accord, um, Latin sponte of one, one's own accord, something that happens suddenly and impulsively, um, so a you may have heard of spontaneous combustion, combustion, which means an explosion that just happens out of the blue. No explanation, sudden, unexplained, just appears from nowhere. So impulses can be spontaneous uh, based on people's desires and um, just whims, needs of the moment and can be dangerous for a group. Uh, mentality or dynamic, but how how might spontaneity be a danger to the group? I don't think I've ever spelled that word before. It was really tricky. Spontaneity. Yeah. Um, we're going to write Piggy's postcard today. So we're going to imagine we're Piggy. And also imagine you're able to send mail from the island. We're going to write to our auntie explaining what's happened in the story so far and how we are feeling. So it's a chance to see the island and that degenerate behavior through the eyes and the spectacles of respectability and responsibility. Uh, so yeah, chance for you to use a few sort of metaphors and uh, writing style. Uh, so let's have a read. Let's find our way over that void to word. Uh, so last time we saw the boys, they are complaining uh, about a beast-like creature, a beastie that one of the boys with a mulberry scar said he's uh, in the, among the creepers and uh, they talk about rational assurance do you remember rational when you read Sherlock Holmes it means logical or perhaps it was um, the Rue Morgue murders rational means you think and you figure out via logic so they're probably challenging the idea of a ghost story exasperation means fr frustration Cons Spiratorial means you are. Con means you're doing something with someone. Uh, conspiratorial means you are scheming with somebody. Uh, I've been too, too ambitious with my Zoom. Look at this. Ooh, in and out. All over the place. I think that's all. Uh, we've just covered spontaneous and... We're just reading page 18 and 19 and then writing a postcard. And sending it on the fantasy pigeon, carrier pigeon to Sussex. He is living in Sussex. Um, so, beast story, scary, breeze stirring, coinciding with the tense atmosphere. You could have. A beastie, a snake-like thing on an island this size, Ralph explained. Kindly. You only get them in big countries like Africa or India, murmur, and to the grave nodding of heads. 
He says the beast he came in the dark, then he couldn't see it. Laughter and cheers. Did you hear that? He says he saw the thing in the dark. He still says he saw the beast. It came and went away again, came back and wanted to eat him. He was dreaming, laughing. Ralph looked for confirmation around the ring of faces. The older boys agreed, but here and there, among the little ones, was the doubt that required more than Ralph. He must have had a nightmare, stumbling about among all those creepers. More grave nodding. They knew about nightmares. He says he saw the beastie, the snake thing, and will it come back tonight? But there isn't a beastie. He says in the morning it turned into them things like ropes in the trees and hung in the branches. He says, will it come back tonight? But there isn't a beastie. There's no laughter at all now. And more grave watching. Ralph pushed both hands through his hair and looked at the little boy in mixed amusement and exasperation. Jack seized the conch. Ralph's right, of course. There isn't a snake thing, but there is... We'd hunt it. We're going to hunt pigs to get meat for everybody. And we'll look for the snake too. But there isn't a snake. We'll make sure when we go hunting. Ralph was annoyed and for the moment defeated. He felt himself facing something ungraspable. The eyes that looked so intently at him were without humour. But there isn't a beast. Something he had not known was there, rose in him, and compelled him to make the point, loudly and again. But I tell you, there isn't a beast. The assembly was silent. Ralph lifted the conch again, and his good humour came back, as he thought of what he had to say next. Now we come to the most important thing. I've been thinking. I was thinking while we were climbing the mountain. He flashed a conspiratorial grin at the other two. And on the beach just now. This is what I thought. We want to have fun. And we want to be rescued. The passionate noise of agreement from the assembly hit him like a wave. And he lost his thread. He thought again. We want to be rescued. And of course we shall be rescued. Voices babbled. The simple statement, unbacked by any proof and the weight of Ralph's new authority, brought light and happiness. He had to wave the conch before he could make them hear him. My father's in the Navy. He said there aren't any unknown islands left. He says the Queen has a big room full of maps and all the islands in the world are drawn there. So the Queen's got a picture of this island. Again came the sounds of cheerfulness and better heart. And sooner or later a ship will put in here. It might even be Daddy's ship. So you see, sooner or later we shall be rescued. He paused with a point made. The assembly was lifted toward safety by his words. They liked and now respected him. Spontaneously, they began to clap, and presently the platform was loud with applause. Ralph flushed, looking sideways at Piggy's open admiration, and then the other way at Jack, who was smirking and showing that he, too, knew how to clap. Ralph waved the conch. Shut up, wait, listen, he went on in the silence, borne on his triumph. There's another thing. We can help them to find us. If a ship comes near the island, they may not notice us. So we must make smoke on top of the mountain. We must make a fire. A fire! Make a fire! At once, half the boys were on their feet. Jack clamoured among them. The conch forgotten. Come on, follow me! The space under the palm trees was full of noise and movement. Ralph was on his feet too, shouting the quiet, but no one heard him. All at once, the crowd swayed toward the island and was gone, following Jack. Even the tiny children went and did their best among the leaves and broken branches. Ralph was left holding the conch with no one but Piggy. Piggy's breathing was quite restored. Little kids, he said scornfully, acting like a crowd of kids. Ralph looked at him doubtfully and laid the conch on the tree trunk. I bet it's gone tea time, said Piggy. What do you think they're going to do on that mountain? He caressed the shell respectfully, then stopped and looked up. Ralph, hey, where are you going? Ralph was already clambering over the first smashed swathes of the scar. A long way ahead of him was crashing and laughter. Piggy watched him in disgust. 
like a crowd of kids. He sighed, bent, and laced up his shoes. The noise of the errant assembly faded up the mountain. Then, with the martyred expression of a parent who has to keep up with the senseless ebullience of the children, he picked up the colt, turned toward the forest, and began to pick his way over the tumbled scar. So, folks, we leave Piggy walking after Ralph and Jack and the rest of the boys looking to light a fire. We'll follow the fire another time. Likewise, this further descent into Wilde's behaviour. Uh, and I imagine you'll do some work on that in the live lesson. Ebullience means enthusiasm. I forgot to cover that earlier. So let's go back over to the the uh, the lesson. Uh, include sound. Folks, why do we need to include sound? Yes, because we have the video summary. It's quite brief, but it just captures the little jaunt up the mountain. <laughs> more interested in going and um, burning things than following the conch's sanctity. Uh, they've, I think they've left it behind. So imagine you're a piggy, also imagine you're able to send mail, write a postcard to your auntie explaining what's happened so far and how you're feeling. So criticize the boys from piggy's perspective. Dear auntie, I ain't having a great time today. I don't mind about there being no food. I even miss tea time today. But there's enough fruit and that, I've tried to speak in piggies or use piggies vernacular, but there's enough fruit in that so I can eat later. Anyway, today Ralph really upset me because he just ran off to the mountain doing headstands. He can't keep charge and we need him to keep charge. He just left the conch and that's the thing we need to keep meetings from becoming chaos. Anyway, I picked the conch up. Everyone else is too busy behaving like kids. Yours, Piggy. And then P.S. over on the right hand side. P.S. means postscript. It means you're writing after you've signed off because you thought, oh, I want to say something else. P.S. I ain't been running too much, auntie. And the bullying ain't as bad as it was. Don't worry. And the address of the auntie I've made up. My auntie, I couldn't think of a name, to Lowdale Estate because Piggy has that, um, well, he's he has that sort of working class background so i've placed him on on um in this sort of given him an address like this little down sussex so a, a slightly a sort of humble salt of the earth kind of address there it is your turn imagine your piggy and so on uh lastly spontaneity spontaneity how does spontaneity break up the meeting just now have fun and We'll speak soon.